Dustin's Vinyl. Here's your host, Dustin Chafin. Yeah. That. <laughs> I just crushed a caffeinated buble. Bubble. I call it buble. Bubble. <laughs> Bub- I like that you call it buble. Buble. A refreshing uh, buble. If you had the ones with caffeine, it's pretty good. It's no. Yeah. I had one of those with, uh, it had CBD in it. I, I guess that's the opposite. It wasn't bubbly, though. I don't think it was bubbly. It was some, it was some other brand. I think it's the last thing you need is a mellow drug. <laughs> I should be doing no. cocaine all the time. You should. You should. You should be doing stimulants, my friend. Stimulants. <laughs> CBD. I don't know about that stuff. Do you, you buy it? Do you buy it? Nah. It's like, I feel like it's all it's snake oil. Yeah, it's like yeah. it's like weed, but it doesn't do anything. It's not weed. It's not weed at all. It's just a plant. It's not the stuff that makes weed weed. It's like. Like, here's a car with no engine. You know what I mean? Like, what's the point? (laughs) Power windows, though. (laughs) You need an engine. Oh, you need a Well, the engine has a battery. So, you need. What are we talking about? I don't know about cars. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, how's the driving thing going? You're still not doing Uh, it yet, right? I'm working my way up to it. I still haven't driven in LA. Let's go go karting or something. Let's get you like familiar with a wheel situation. I think that's you gotta. <laughs> yeah, you know where do I mean? we get? Where do we do go karts in? In everywhere, is everywhere, and we go bumper cars. That I mean, that's really what the LA traffic is like. So <laughs> we'll just a lot of that's this confronting my fears. <laughs> that's what it is. I'm afraid to get into accidents. So what do we do? Bumper cars. Bumper car. Oh. I think if we could. Yeah. Well, you. Yeah. Okay. I get it. You were in an accident at one point, so you're rough one. Yeah. Right? You're like a. I had like like a broken neck and uh, oh my god collapsed lung, you know the works. <laughs> <laughs> Give me one with everything. <laughs> I had a chest tube. Wow. wow. Did you make money off it at least? No. The thing is, I was too uh... early in my comedy career, so nobody knew who I was. So I didn't get any. Um, I didn't get like bookings because of it, or or like press. Or any no, kind of I meant, buzz. I meant like, did you sue the guy that hit you? Oh, <laughs> I just hydroplaned. So it was I don't a- know you were like, you were like, I'm not Tracy Morgan. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you no. didn't even hit a car. You no, I hit a wall. So I hydroplaned oh, on the highway and I hit a cement wall. God. So there was, it was just, and no one else was in the car. So it was, Thank which God. was good. But it was, so it was just me involved. Yeah, that's what you told the police. Meanwhile, there's a there's a young seventeen year old girl missing. <laughs> People are still looking for. I don't know. I was just about myself. <laughs> I don't know Maybe nothing about show. that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, come on, uh, Nobody watch this succession. Come on, guys. All right. Um, <laughs> This is gonna be a weird show. I'm not. I'm not. You know when you're just like you're not there, but you're there. That's where I'm at right now. Like I don't. I don't know. It's like because it's so hot. You know. It's like yeah. I. Just, I don't know. It's like weird. LA's weird right now. It's Take like, a dip uh, in the pool. I did. I didn't do anything. This made me want to not do this show and keep swimming. It's <laughs> 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 like oh, I gotta do this show. Then you got yeah. You know, get ready for this show. Buy my Johnny Cash shirt. So I can do my thing. <laughs> Um. Yeah, there's a shooting around the corner. That's that's oh. pretty crazy. Yeah, it's um right there by the CVS on Hollywood Boulevard. Mm-hmm. It's like uh, it's 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 weird because it's like you know it, it, when something like that happens, you just think ah, you know, it's like I wish I lived in the country, and then and then in the country, like a bear will eat you. So you know what I mean? Like there's wherever you go, there's going to be something. <laughs> it's right? always no? always trouble. <laughs> Guns, bears. <laughs> Right? Bears with guns. Bears with guns. Hey, that's I like that. That's our new. That's the name of uh, our new show. Bears with guns. <laughs> Bears with guns. <laughs> I like that. Let's see. Let's pitch it to Jay. He'll take. He'll take anything. <laughs> he'll take any show idea. Hey, I'm just getting word now. We are. We are. We're, we're canceled. I just got word. Comedy Hub is canceled. <laughs> Dustin's final. <laughs> 
<laughs> Justin's vile. Are you kidding me? Come on. Jay loves me. Jay, I'm, that, I'm that redneck cousin he doesn't talk to. All right. So let's uh, start. Let's bring in the other guy. There's another yeah, guy, right? Let's bring in. Yeah, there's another, there's guy. another guy. There's one guy today. Ladies and gentlemen, very funny. He is our, uh, who's that guy on MTV? Kurt. Kurt, Kurt Loader. He's, Loader. <laughs> He's our Kurt Loader of Dustin's Vile. <laughs> Give it up, everybody. Adam Holt! Yeah. Hey, guys. Can he, hey, I can't remember names, man. Like, it's the worst when you're like, He's that guy. You know that guy? Right. And you're just like, <laughs> Oh, this, the joke is gone by that point. Yeah. But you do know a lot of stuff. I feel like, uh, do you read Rolling Stone? I feel like you read. I used music to up stuff, until Adam. yeah, up until yeah. they uh, they they turned into Maxim at that one point. But um, Maxim, oh. what do you mean? Yeah, the, they had the, they had the the I think it was like the editor of Maxim took over and they kind of shrunk it down. Um, oh, this was this was years ago. Yeah, yeah, I liked it. That it was it was bigger than you. The magazine, I liked it when yeah. it was just gigantic. It was just something <laughs> like just huge. Oh yeah, now um, it's small. Oh yeah. That's what she said. No. <laughs> <laughs> this show's terrible today. Kids, play Fortnite. This is not worth watching. Um, I think I'm it's going to be really up. bad. Yeah, no, not at all. Really, yeah. with you, me, and you? Yeah, I don't think so. And Adam, got- he barely, he barely wants to be here. So yeah, he's like, Adam, yep. where were you? You were in Greece or something, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, no, I was, I was in, uh, so I was in Italy, Greece, and Turkey. Wow. Oh my God. That's amazing. Did you get your hair done in Turkey? I always wanted to go there and get my hair done. No. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, you know what I'm talking about? Everybody goes there to get their hair done. They get like the, you get like bangs and stuff. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, they have the, uh, they have the, the, the big grand, bu- I, I was in Istanbul for a day. They had the big grand bazaar. So they got 6,000 stores. It's absolute wow. just mayhem. Uh, I asked the tour guide, I'm like, is there a record store here? He's like, no. I'm like, out of the 6,000 stores there, they don't wow. sell any records. Oh, wow. Well, where were you where they had records? I thought you said some place was had records. Well, actually, stores. actually, in um, uh, so it, it was in Istanbul. There was an area um, a few miles away that had, I think, 14 record stores. I just didn't have oh, the wow. time to get over there. But, um, oh, okay. And then uh, in Mykonos, I, uh, I walked over to one. It was closed. Um, but outside of that, I, I didn't really get a chance to to go to any. <laughs> well, did you have fun? Did you have fun in regard? Oh yeah. <laughs> I love that. Like, yeah, no record stores. Vacation sucked. Right. <laughs> we, just, we 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 just sat in the we just sat in the house and listened to cassettes. We had no right. records. Um, <laughs> that's cool. So you with your family or what? Yeah, yeah, it was okay. uh, it was one one of those trips. Uh, my my mom's big into uh, doing. Uh, it was a part of it was a cruise, so she's big into into doing oh, cruises, wow. and um, so she's been trying to plan this for the last three years. It just keeps it kept getting uh, canceled because of COVID. Okay. Um, so so yeah, it was. So, um, so you know, it was I spent part some cruise. Yeah, so I spent some time in Italy, then then went over, got on the cruise in Rome. And then, uh, yeah, so it just went Rome, uh, Turkey, and ended it ended in Greece. How was the cruise? Anthony's ever been on a cruise. How was it? <laughs> well, it's uh... <laughs> I just knew. Th- I just knew that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it, I think it'd be fun if you're in your sixties, sixties or seventies. Okay, so it's yeah. really it kind of skews pretty old, but um, yeah. Um, so mostly all the fun was you know getting off the boat and. And uh, you know, going to these different cities. Was there a comic? There was. There was. Uh, I didn't. I didn't see. I didn't see his performance. But it was. Uh, oh man, what was his name? I, I can't even remember either. But um, that's why he's uh, on the, cruise, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I got asked to do. I got asked to do cruises last week, and I, I might do it. But it's like. I don't think I have the act for it. I think I'm going to be one of those guys that gets flown a helicopter. They're going to fly in a helicopter and take off the boat. Like there was a story when we first started comedy that there was a guy, it was like a Bill Hicks. He was all edgy and they basically helicoptered him off the cruise because everybody flipped out because he was like, they hated him. Wow. <laughs> so it was like a whole thing. He was like edgy, like, you know, it was political, whatever. And he was just saying, we're like, fuck this guy. And they like, they like they took him off. They, they helicoptered him off. Which I think it's, 
the greatest thing ever. Like, I, I want to meet that guy. It's like, you're the, you're the coolest dude ever. They had to helicopter you off the fucking Spirit, Spirit Cruises or whatever it's called. Carnival Cruises. I just think that's so funny. They had a uh, cool. they had an eighties night one of the nights and uh, so there's yeah. this plaza area and they have a band up there so we're we're like all right you know this could be this could be kind of fun and the first song they did was uh, Lady in Red and it was just <laughs> that was the tone it was just nice. slow song after slow song Anthony loves that song Lady um, in Red <laughs> that's my jam it is your jam <laughs> ah, all right guys. Hang in there. We can do this. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you sent me an article. Uh, it was actually Rolling Stones. It was yeah. the uh, yeah. top 100 country albums of all time. Um, I don't know if I agree with the list. It was like uh, it's a pretty bad list. Yeah. It was like, uh, did you read it, Anthony? You didn't read it. Did I didn't you? see it. What was? Yeah. The, who was number one? All I, uh, I don't remember. Dolly Jolene? Parton. Yeah. No. Nah. Uh, is that on there? That's not on there. It's Code it was, of Many Colors. Code oh, of Many Colors, There's, yeah. Jo, Jolene is not on any of our albums, by the way. I don't know. Um, it's uh, kind of a rare thing. Not any of our studio albums. It might be on one of our live albums. I thought the album was called Jolene. I don't think so. Maybe now, like something recent, but nothing in the past, I don't know, 20 years. Like, oh. uh, all right, look it up. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Probably not, because I'm usually right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just put on a Jeff video. All right, so <laughs> random polls. Anybody got any? Anthony? No. You sucker. You sucker. <laughs> sucker. Uh, I, got, <clears throat> I got reached for the sky by the Almond Brothers. This is a uh, pretty cool Almond Brothers album. Uh, Hell or High Water is really good. And look, there's a black dude. I don't know where he came from. but <laughs> was, he in, was he in the band? <laughs> I, just, I just recognized that. I don't know. I got think so. <laughs> We're totally getting canceled. Um, <laughs> I think I've listened to this album. I, you ever buy albums that you like books? You don't really listen to them? Do yeah. <laughs> They're just on a shelf. Yeah, it is, I do. I buy, I'm like, oh, I need more Almond Brothers. Then I'll put it in the thing and I'll be like, I just haven't listened to it yet. I've owned it for five years. I think yeah. this might be one of those albums. I'm all like, this song's great. I have no idea. But I have it. <laughs> it exists on a shelf. <laughs> it's on a shelf. And I feel like my album kind of is inspired by this dude today, the one I picked. So oh, yeah. uh, I got a little, a little Stevie Wonder. This is... Uh, a cool album i've actually listened to this one i think three times and uh it's got stevie there it has my favorite sus uh, suspicious uh what is it oh, suspicious that's mind? Su su superstition superstition Gosh, yeah. dang it i'm getting old. Song. i can't i can't talk anymore uh just su superstitious right in that that would that's a good one uh this is a good album that's all i got <laughs> so, nice you got somebody in the kitchen what's happening Adam, <laughs> what you got? a sandwich <laughs> <laughs> is somebody stealing your chinese food <laughs> out of the refrigerator <laughs> get out of there that's not yours right <laughs> they're doing a I random pull but it's with snacks right yeah <laughs> instead of pulling Some a record over your... there <laughs> cheese it i love cheese yeah. <laughs> all right I feel this is going to be a weird show. Yep. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So, top 100. I, yeah. Top 100 country songs. It was funny. I think the 100 was poor old Kenny Chesney. And then, yep. uh, and there was, uh, and then number one was Dolly Parton. Uh, Redheaded Stranger, I think, was number five or four. That was think, number, uh, I think, three. Three. Okay. Three. Yeah, number three. That's, that's a perfect country album. That's got a lot of really good songs on it. Um, I was surprised that Folsom Blues was over uh, Live at San Quentin. I think that's a better prison life album. But I was also surprised none of the Johnny Cash stuff made it. The Johnny yeah. Cash later stuff, the uh, uh, Rick Rubin stuff. I was surprised none of that stuff made it. Oh, yeah. Those are great. Uh, yeah, I think so. All right. You guys you guys aren't into country enough to go with me on this. So well, the number the weird thing, number four, Ray <laughs> Charles, Modern Sounds and Country and Western Music. Yeah, I have that album. 
I never listened to the country stuff that he did. Was it good? Uh, yeah, that's a great album. The album is very acclaimed and stuff. I mean, you know, country, if you take out the twang, country's very rhythm and blues. It's very much a part of, you know, regular music. You know, that that started the beginning of some music, you know, black music and African-American music and stuff. So it's like, you know, we're just ripping people off and adding an accent, (laughs) (laughs) slowing it down, adding some acoustic. That's all we're doing. That's how we're stealing black music. Um, This is a really weird show. I like it. I like it weird. (laughs) Um, <laughs> so today was Anthony explain what our theme was today. Oh yeah, the theme uh this week was albums recorded by side projects. That's the theme. <laughs> so <laughs> bands <laughs> elaborate a little. <laughs> band uh side so a side project is a band that is a sort of an offshoot of another band. Okay. Cool. Am I? Are we starting with my album or? <laughs> of course. Oh, okay. I, 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 I'm not going to break this rhythm you got. Oh but. yeah. Well, I didn't know if I was supposed to go right into it or if I was just explaining the theme. Uh, but I picked uh, a uh, a band called the Network, which was a side project of the uh, more popular band uh, Green Day, and, and this was the the debut album from the Network. It was called Money Money 2020. Came out in uh, 2003. So this was like right before American Idiot came out. Before before Green Day reclaimed their uh, the success they had with uh, Dookie. They were sort of like grasping at straws for a, a lot of years. And they had a bunch of side projects. And they were like just seemed like they were trying to figure out what they wanted to do. And this is a fun kind of new wave Devo kind of sounding album. And I believe Mike Dirnt uh, sings lead on some of the songs. Like I think the, the opening track, Joe Robot, I think is Mike Dirnt singing. So you get like a couple of Billy Joe songs, you get Mike Dirnt, but uh, most of it does not sound very much like Green Day at all. And what I thought was fun about this side pro- project in particular was that uh they denied being associated with green day so the network uh they mm. they when they played shows they were wearing masks and oh, really? uh, they had wow. fake names and stuff like that and they would speak with accents i forget where they were supposed to be from norway or sweden or something like that oh, i think really? and they just pretended that they didn't have anything to do with green day even though uh uh, this album actually came out on Billy Joe's own label, Adeline. I think it was called Adeline Records, um, which doesn't exist anymore. But so it was put out on his label, uh, very clearly uh, him singing on a couple of tracks and and they're denying the the relation. So I, I thought that was kind of fun. <laughs> Did, they, did they, people buy it? Did people buy that it wasn't them? Or was it, they get, I feel like it was like easy to be like, okay, this is great day. Yeah, like, I think fans knew right away, but I think it was just like a kind of interesting angle for like press and stuff. Because okay. it, it seemed like journalists were like, I don't know, we, we're pretty sure it's Green Day, but they're denying it. But then you listen yeah. to it and you're like, all right, I can tell right. this is, <laughs> I can tell this is Green Day. It's on Billy Joe's label. So there's no way that it's not That's um, hilarious. and then but, but, you know in recent years i think mike Dirnt uh talked about it uh, a little more openly so now the cat's out of the bag um but they they did a couple more i think they, they put out a second album in 2020 they had they oh, they, okay. they kind of went away for like 15 years and then uh they, oh, they that's came the back one i listened to was i supposed to listen to the first one yeah oh. <laughs> did you listen to the new one yeah. Oh, because <laughs> <laughs> it was called Money Money 2020 Part yeah, 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 Two. Yeah. We told you oh. so. Uh, I know. What are you gonna do? Well, that I mean, I don't think that one was as good, but uh, oh, okay. But I, I liked that one yeah. too. Yeah, I think it's you know. It, well, we might as well just talk talk about it. <laughs> you listen to yeah. one of their albums. Yeah. No, I don't care. I listen. Um, 
did you ever see that there was a documentary that came out? I'm not quite sure what it was called. It was about a guy that wore a mask and everybody thought he was Elvis. Did you guys ever see that? It was I like did- a, it's no. a documentary and like people were just, just, re- he sounded just like Elvis, but he had a mask on. He had like the hair kind of <laughs> like him and stuff. Oh yeah. And his, his build is a whole documentary on Netflix. is about everybody just thought it was Elvis pretending like wearing a mask and like, oh. you know, that's, <laughs> like if Elvis is alive, I don't, you know, it was just weird. Like he would just be hiding his face, but it was like, uh, anyway, but it wasn't Elvis. <laughs> it wasn't Elvis. And, uh, it wasn't Elvis. Elvis is dead. <laughs> so they say so they say um well okay i mean adam listened to the right album but right. Um, <laughs> what i listen to i like i like bands being funky and doing weird shit and i think this is uh, a good example of that um so that's interesting i didn't know that they started this like early after their hits and stuff like yeah i thought this is something that maybe they did like recently but uh, yeah, it had a kind of a Zig Zig Sputnik kind of feel, which is a big band that I liked when I was a kid. Uh, it was kind of a you know Russian dance, weird kind of you know yeah. psycho dance music stuff. So uh, yeah, I liked it. I thought it was uh, all over the place, and I didn't really sound like Green Day. And, and that's the thing. I think it's like once artists get to a certain level, it's like they want to do something completely different. You know, they want to take some you know chances. And and a band like this is obviously influenced by so many people. So it would make sense that they would, you know, do another album that sounded like other people. I'm kidding. But <laughs> <laughs> they can't get away from influence. But yeah, I mean, they're good. They're great. They're a great band um, to listen to. But, you know, but we all know that they come from, you know, cores of punk bands and things. But but this was cool. I thought it was interesting. Um yeah, Adam, what did you how did you feel? You listened to the right album. What did you think? Yeah, I mean, I remember I remember when this album came out and I, I thought off the bat that everybody was just saying, yeah, this is a Green Day. This is this is their side project. I, I didn't really realize that it was uh, that they kept denying it. Um, but um, but I mean, I, I really I always loved Green Day. They were one of the first big shows I saw. I, I, I saw them on the uh, Insomniac tour um, at uh, Nassau Coliseum. I think it was like the nice. like 90, 95 or 96. And um, so I, I followed them for a while up until um probably the album that was right around this one. Um, but, but this album, I, you know, I liked the first few songs. I thought it got a bit repetitive and actually my favorite song on here is spike, which oh, spike. I feel has a, I feel it has a replacements vibe to it, which the replacements, um, you know, were a pretty big influence on Billy Joe and, and, um, uh, and green day. But, um, but yeah, I just thought like there's, there's just a lot of repetitive songs in here. um, but is it? It is an interesting side project. I know they have "Teenagers from Mars," the Misfits cover, which is pretty good. Later on in the uh, album, oh yeah, that was a bonus track. I, yeah. I had the album before they added that, so I think the last two tracks on on like whatever is on streaming. Yeah, I I had I had the old school. It actually came with like a a, a CD ROM or it was a DVD or something. <laughs> yeah, with I think the music it had videos. A, yeah, I forget <laughs> I what it had was. Like six of the Lobby videos. Disc. Yeah, I, 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 have a, I have a floppy disk. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> it was floppy. It was, That's why they it called was it flo- floppy. Yeah, disc. it was the big floppy one. It was the size of an entire room. It was. It was. <laughs> Do we have a Jeff video on this? Uh, yeah. Which, which Oh, I called? wonder what Jeff uh, thought of it. Oh, he's wearing his headband. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if he listened to the the same one you did, Dustin. Probably. That's what old people do. We listen to the wrong albums. <laughs> All right. So let's talk a little bit about Anthony 20. Um, I wasn't familiar with this. I wasn't familiar with uh, Adam's band. I wasn't really familiar with the band he would join. He, he fit in perfect. Um, this is essentially Green Day. Uh, they gave themselves uh, dopey names like uh, the Red, not the Red Hot Chili Peppers, the, the Traveling Wilburys. They gave themselves names like that. Uh, this album, it, it's it's okay. You know, it it it's a, a very repetitive, uh, very eighties, uh, inspired maybe by one of Anthony's favorite bands and favorite albums. Uh, maybe it's inspired by Styx, Mr. Roboto. I know Anthony's a huge Styx fan, so uh, I could see him getting on board with the network. 
Um, I'm surprised they didn't do a cover of Mr. Roboto. But to me, this kind of sounds like, it sounds punky. It sounds odd. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, very repetitive, redundant, kind of like your comments. No, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> oh, sticking it to Jeff. He ain't here. That's what you get when you have other things going on. <laughs> we make fun of you. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, uh, I was, as he was talking, I the craft work thing, that makes sense. You know, yeah. just kind of like experimental stuff. You could tell, like, they're influenced by that kind of groovy stuff that was happening on uh, the early 80s. But, uh, yeah. I mean, it's just so funny. I guarantee you that album made money. It pro- right? I'm sure it did. Adam, what are they? Can you add, see what kind of money that made? So we could see, see if Jeff was completely wrong, which is my favorite part of the show. <laughs> it's proving Jeff wrong, especially when he's not on here. It's great. Right. <laughs> well, Billy Joe put it out on his own label at first. So he must have made more money than. I think that it got re-released. I think that's why there's the two extra songs now. Okay. So he probably made some kind of secondary deal and then re-released it. I'm sure he made money on this. Yeah. Even if it didn't sell well because it's on his label and stuff. Because I remember doing things like, you know, like sometimes it's like there's a thing that happens with bands where it's like, like you love a band. And then you can't get enough of that band. So then you seek out their, the solo work. You seek out the side project just because you, you know, you love the band. And so you're just like going for all the other shit that's not as good as the original, maybe. But you're still like, you know, I think there's a lot of fans like that. Like, uh, you know, I remember uh, I really liked Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yeah. And I remember uh, I uh, bought like Tim Curry's solo album, you know, because I was like, <laughs> I want more of this. And boy, that was that that was a mistake. But um, I never heard his album. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's all right. It's just, you know, he excelled in that environment. You know what I mean? Yeah. Any any word, Adam? No, I can't find anything on it. OK, well, I guess Jeff's right. He made no money. No money. Right. <laughs> They're so. still paying it off to this day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like the Texas Rangers still paying for A-Rod. Huh? Uh, Jay, oh, that's a baseball sport, joke. You sports. appreciate a baseball or joke. The, or the Mets still paying for Bobby Bonilla. <laughs> oh, this guy with a oh. sports joke. Anthony has no idea what we're talking about. Uh, <laughs> uh, <yeah>. um, <laughs> very cool. Uh, yeah, well, let's go into mine, and then we'll go into uh, Adam's. So um, I love the side project uh, theme. I think it's interesting because – you know, I think the worst side project theme of all time, um, hands down, was Garth Brooks. Um, <laughs> Chris Gaines. Yep. Chris Gaines. Uh, I wish I chose that one. I just thought of it. But, <laughs> um, oh, man. Yeah, because it was like, you know, he was this, you know, the biggest freaking country star of all time. Like, it, literally, I mean, just stadiums and like amazing, you know. And so I think there is a point in your, you know, in your life when you're that big and your genre, it's like, you can't really go any further. You're like, all right, let me do something weird, you know? And I think, um, you know, grunge was so popular at the time. And I think he was just like, you know, this let's, let's dance in this and see what happens. And so it, I remember that album cover, they morphed his face and gave him black hair and a little the soul patch. patch. Yeah, the soul patch. <laughs> 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 a little soul patch. Yeah, you know, it was just like such a bizarre thing. And I think it was terrible. I don't I don't remember. Did they I guess they released songs, right? They had to release well, something. I think he hosted SNL too as Chris Gaines. Oh, oh no. Did yeah. he wear a wig? Yeah, and I, I, oh, I got to find a pic, oh, uh, photo of it. It was That's... supposed to be a, a movie. What? That was like... I think that was the original concept was he had this character and he was going to do a movie and then the album oh was the God. soundtrack to the movie. Oh, but wow. then nobody liked it, so he he abandoned the movie project. <laughs> Why would he think anyone would like it? Like that's <laughs> I don't I don't know. I think if yeah, I'm that's... I'm pretty sure that was the story. That was what I remember hearing about it. I don't I don't remember the songs. I never, well, I never checked it out. Yeah, I mean that's that God complex where you think you're just, you know, you're so yeah. big that they'll they'll love this too, you know. <laughs> you're like, nah, dude. You put on a cowboy hat and you talk about low places. That's all they want you for. <laughs> 
anyway, he got too big for his uh, brushes. The, the side by side. <laughs> oh yeah, it looks like he's in Fallout Boy. <laughs> right. <laughs> he's pretty sexy on the right. I'll tell you, you got that eyeliner going. Yeah. Eyeliner make any any man sexy. <laughs> you need some eyeliner, Anthony. That's I'm gonna start wearing eyeliner. Get off, doing it. Take the glasses off. Put on some eyeliner. <laughs> <laughs> all right so let's see i guess it's my turn you son of a bitches um <clears throat> yeah you know this album was really popular but i didn't really get into it till kind of recently and um you know once in a while i try to you know seek out stuff that's not really my genre if you will not really something i'm gonna go out of my way for <clears throat> but I recognize talent when I see it and when I hear it. And, and, you know, and it's undeniable, you know, Bruno Mars is basically our Michael Jackson. You know, he's this super talent. The guy can sing, the guy can dance, the guy writes good music, he produces good things. <clears throat> so this is his side project, uh, uh, Silk Sonic. Um, it's uh, with uh, Bruno Mars, Anderson Pack, who's apparently a rapper and a drummer. And they put this uh, album together during quarantine and it was kind of a way for them to keep busy during the pandemic. It was kind of oh. one of those, those things where like, Hey man, let's work. Let's try to, you know, produce something and just keep busy for the sanity. Kind of like Anthony, when you and I did the zoom album, you know what I mean? We had yeah. to do something. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> and so, and these shows on comedy hub, you know, saved our sanity. And so I think it's uh, on a higher level. That's what these guys did. And, uh, and they ended up, like this became like album of the year. They won Grammys for, uh, you know, song of the year, record of the year, uh, you know, R and B album, you know, songs, whatever. <clears throat> and this is kind of one of those albums that, uh, you know, it has a lot of sound of Motown. It's got kind of these, uh, Stevie wonder references and things. And it just, it's, it's like you listen to it and it's just got this old school sound, but it has an edge to it. That's very modern. So I really like this album. Uh, Silk Sonic, I think it's very cool. Uh, I'll start with one of the big tracks, uh, Leave Door Open, uh, which is one of their uh, big singles on, on the album. It's sexy, it's funky, it's kind of a pop old school feel. Uh, it has everything from Stevie Wonder, Smokey Robinson, Brian McKnight. Like it's just, it has all that great stuff with it. Uh, very cool. And then uh, one of my favorite songs is Fly Is Me which I think I love a nice swag song about yourself. <laughs> so that has a, that, that's a really funny song because it start it, when it starts, you think it's going to be James Brown kind of, and then it kind of flips into this uh, rap and the hip hop stuff. And then it kind of goes down a parliament route and you're mm -hmm. just like, it's all funky and cool. So it's like just so cool. Um, Smoking out the window has a very temptations, Marvin Gaye sound uh, with edgy lyrics. That's, what's really funny. It's like, because the backbeat on these on these songs are very kind of, you know, old school kind of like guys that wear the same outfits and shit. And then they start like and then he opens this opens the song with yo, bitch, you know, so it's just really <laughs> funny how it's like this edgy material with this kind of old school sound. So uh, it's a great album. Um, and then Love Train, another sexy one. And uh, and after last night, I mean, you almost get pregnant if you when you hear this song. Like, it's just so sexy. It's got a kind of supreme, kind of Barry White feel to it. But I really like what they did with this whole thing. Because you could tell they're fans of the genre, old school music, whatever. And they kind of made their own kind of funky sound. With The videos are amazing. It just makes you really love Bruno a little bit more. Because you see how much talent he he could just, you know, the guy could do anything. Like he just keeps kind of going and doing, you know, different genres with this. And it it's just, you know, just really shows you the talent that he is. But I really enjoy it. And uh, I really hit my I, – it's hard to find on uh, vinyl sometimes because a lot of people buy it out. Yeah. I saw it in Alabama and I was going to buy it. I was like, ah, I'll get it again and I wish I'd gotten it. But uh, it's definitely a great album. Um, I think it's like a sexy, fun, kind of put on party album. Like just, you know, you feel good when you listen to it. There's a lot of music that Adam listens to that, that you know, Anthony listens to that I listen to, too. It's all depressing, you know. Like, I, it's like, right. it's like <laughs> fight against the man or you don't fucking get me dead or you know, it's like all, <laughs> all this like nobody loves me. And then it's like this stuff is funky and fun and makes you want to dance with your girl and like, you know, be sexy and silly and upbeat. So I don't know. I think this is a great, great album. And uh, I think it's a really cool project that they did. 
And I love it that it was just kind of like keep their sanity and ended up being this tremendous album. So that's what I think Silk Sonic. Anthony, how'd you feel about this? I know it's not your genre of music, but how'd you feel? Uh, I I liked it. I, I had not heard of it before. I know you said it was successful. I I don't think it made any money. This thing, there's no way they're making money on this thing. <laughs> it makes ten dollars. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but I liked it a lot. I liked that it was like a updated sound, but very much like it was equally updated as it was like mm-hmm. a throwback to the to that kind of Motown sort of sound. It was like all the instruments and stuff that you expect. It almost almost sounded like uh, it was going to be like a a rap album, and those were just like. Motown samples because it sounded kind of yeah. like drum yeah. machine. So it was, I, I liked, I liked the production. I, I liked everything about it. Really. I, I wasn't sure. Cause I'm not a huge Bruno Mars fan. Yeah. Uh, but I, I liked this a lot. Yeah. I'm not either. Like the other stuff he does, it's very talented, but it's still too poppy yeah. dancey for me, but this yeah. is groovy. I like the grooveness of this really kind of draw. I was drawn to him a little more after yeah. this. Me too. Yeah. I, I would listen yeah. to this again. I would put this, yeah. uh, you know, I yeah. listen to this a few more times, get into yeah, it more. Good. Adam, what'd you think? I mean, I definitely want to pick up the vinyl for this one. And um, it's <laughs> I, so in all the way. that's the biggest compliment. Like yeah. on the show, we're like, I need it on vinyl. All right. right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would listen to it again. He's gonna buy it on vinyl. Right. It might sit unopened for a while, but <laughs> it's uh... <laughs> it went on my shelf. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but Next no, I mean I really <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, I really enjoyed it. I, I thought the same thing. This is a feel-good album. It's funky. It's smooth. Um, you know, there's a um, you know, "Fly as Me." I, I thought was one of the one of the best songs on the album. Seven seven seven. Also, just just a, uh, a great song too. Um, but yeah, it's just it was. You know, I had this in my car, driving around to it. It's it just it's um, it just uplifts you. It's it's a great. Uh, it's a great fun album. Very cool. We uh, we need fun in our lives. You know what right. I mean. Life is pretty depressing, so you right. need an upbeat, kind of like Cool in the Gang. It remind me, of. remember <laughs> Cool in the Gang? We were kids. Yeah. Like, put on when Celebration came on. How could you be in a bad mood when Celebration came you on? You can't right. be. <laughs> it's impossible. Celebration, come on. All right. What did Jeff think? Yeah. Let's see. All right, so let's talk a little bit about Silk Sonic. Uh, this is Bruno, right from the Bootsy Collins introduction, the first song, a little under two minutes. Uh, great, really sets you up for what the album is going to be. Um, it's big sound, great production on it. Um, funny, the lyrics, but music, real music. It's not seen. You get drums, you can hear the bass, you uh, hear the horns, which always makes a sound. It was so, um, it was sexy, it was smooth. I mean, what, what else do you expect from uh, Bruno Mars? But an album, this great album, and it's worth uh, checking out. Um, also, I, I like that he threw in what he would have picked. Right. Yeah, nobody cares. <laughs> 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 when Jeff likes my album, I always say, "Gosh, to pick something different." Um, uh, <laughs> I'm surprised he had so much positive stuff to say. He's always a uh, naysayer. Well, he's that's kind of the genre of a little, a little bit of the music. He's a disco guy, and it's uh, very yeah, disco. Yeah. It has some disco feel to it. Yeah, he's a phenomenal dancer, so he's gonna <laughs> like music like that. So, uh, and uh, I would have picked Audio Slate. We're not going to let you pick one if we're not here to talk about it. That's the new rule. Because <laughs> then we don't have time. <laughs> it's like going to talk about somebody else's album. Come on, man. We need some structure here. We're trying to, we're trying to get we're on a time limit. Uh, but yeah, that was, that was cool. Um, so Jeff liked my album. Two weeks in a row. I really got to go. I'm going to go obscure next time. So uh, let's see. Adam, your pick. What do you got? All right, so um, all right, so I went with um, it was my favorite band of all time is Radiohead, and uh, and I've resisted the urge for so long to to choose one of their albums. Um, so I was like, oh hey, I with the side projects, I have the opportunity to talk about Radiohead without going into one of their albums. So uh, I did uh, their uh, side project, which is a recent album, The Smile, A Light for Attracting Attention. Now, just like uh, Silk Sonic, this album 
was uh, created during the pandemic. Um, this is uh, so it's Radiohead's Tom York and Johnny Greenwood with uh, Sons of Kemet drummer Tom Skinner. And for the most part, this is pretty much a Radiohead album. I mean, there's really, uh, I mean, you even have Nigel Godrich uh, um, producing it too. So for the most part, um, it, it pretty much is. It's, it's, it almost feels like the follow up to Moonshape Pool. And um, so, firstly, the, the name of it, The Smile, uh, Tom York said the name is, we're, we're called The Smile, not The Smile as in, ah, more The Smile of the guy who tries to lie to you every day. So it kind of sets the tone. This is going to be a, a darker album. It's definitely the opposite of the Silk Sonic album. Um, but um, <laughs> it's, um, but but there is there is a lot of um, you know it, it kind of reflects a lot of what's going on today um, in, in terms of what Radiohead album would be closest to would be Hail to the Thief, which um, was probably the most overtly political album. This one though, that one was really dark. I mean, that came out post nine eleven during the Bush administration it was all about the war on terror about the iraq war um uh it got pretty dark this one at least there's some signals of hope in here uh it starts off with um uh it starts off the same which is a more electronic song kind of like uh kid a's everything in its right place and uh the song calls for kind of unity in the face of oppression um it, it feels a bit like um two plus two equals five off of hail to the thief um and then it goes into um, the opposite, which is a more funkier kind of song. It plays up more on um, uh, uh, Sons of Kemet drummers, Tom Skinner's kind of jazz skills. Um, and then you have You'll Never Work in Television Again, one of the highlights of the album, too, which is um, pretty much it, it's pure guitar rock. It's almost Radiohead going into garage rock. It's something that, um, you know, they haven't really done since um, pretty much the Benz. Um, but it's a it, it's a lambasting of the entertainment industry, uh, sort of targeting Harvey Weinstein and all these different executives uh, who abuse their power. Um, then you got a uh, Panavision, which is uh, Tom York on the piano. It's got more of like a cinematic soundtrack kind of playing on um, the the work that him and uh, Johnny Greenwood have been doing, um, scoring all these different films. Uh, you got a uh, the Smoke, which is more of like trip hop acid jazz uh beats similar to dj shadow who was a big influence on them for uh, okay computer and um the vocals on this one at least to me remind me a lot of um talk show host which was uh, a b-side for radiohead that actually um ended uh the film romeo and juliet the uh the buzz larman one um then you have um uh one of my favorites on this album i'm gonna skip over to it uh thin thing which is this hyperactive kind of math rock. Um, it, it, this is more of the, the Radiohead vibe that I like. It, it's, um, it has the, the kind of chaos of almost like Charles Mingus jazz. It's, uh, it kind of reminds me of what Black Midi is doing right now. And then, um, let me see, we'll just kind of skip around here. All right, so we got Free in the Knowledge, which is probably one of the most beautiful songs on the album. It's, it's this kind of sparse acoustic almost folk song on it it's very reminiscent of uh fake plastic trees off of the bends and uh there's even like this little bit in there that's um towards the end tom york starts singing almost i don't know if it's an homage to it but there's these kind of allusions to michael jackson's man in the mirror um and then um uh, yeah we don't know what tomorrow brings if the fantastic song um but for the most part i mean this really you know even though it's the smile it just seems to be this Radiohead album. It's kind of weird that they didn't just release it under Radiohead, but, um, but it's definitely one, it's become one of my favorite albums of this year. And um, it's definitely one that's been growing on me too. Awesome. Uh, yeah. I have never met anybody in my lifetime that knows so much about Radiohead. Then <laughs> <laughs> this is why I was skipping. Yeah. I was skipping around because I actually had <laughs> I had so much more that I wrote wow. about this, and I was like, I gotta, wow. I gotta cut this down. We got like five minutes wow. left. <laughs> wow, I I don't know anything about my bands like that. That's amazing. <laughs> That's um, no, I feel like Radiohead fans. They're very loyal. It's like a, it's almost like a fish fan. Like it's like a, it's a specific fan. You know, it's like a, 
you know, you guys are connected to that band. Um, I feel like in a way that's, you know, almost emotional. Like it's just a thing that you just, yeah. uh, you can't, can't get enough of it. You know, it's a music that speaks to you and it's like, it's good stuff. I mean, this album was a black midi, very black midi. I felt like yeah. that's a lot of the, that's what I felt when I was listening to it. And I like Radiohead. I don't kind of get into them obviously kind of like you do, but I, I feel like they're very talented. I feel like this is something that was an interesting listen I felt like it was weird and fun and, you know, it just kept my interest. It's also an album that you have to listen to a couple of times, man. You can't oh, just yeah. give this a one, can't give this a once over and be like, okay, yeah, it's pretty good. Like you have to really kind of walk in to kind of, to feel it. But I think it's a band that has a lot of emotion and you do feel the music, even when it's like they're taking risks with tech, yeah. you know, techno stuff. And like, it was pretty cool. Um, yeah, I like Radiohead. They do one of my favorite covers of Rhinestone Cowboy. You know, like yep. that's one of my favorites. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> they do like a they do like a live version of the old song, but they're great. This album was weird and fun. And uh, Anthony, what'd you think? I I liked it, um, and I respect that they they did a side project that doesn't sound fun. You know, <laughs> they're like yeah, we're, they, it's, <laughs> we're, we're, it doesn't they're not uh it doesn't sound like brand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like it was a lot of work to make this right. uh it yeah. doesn't the, the other ones we picked like green day messing around doing a devo yeah. album and uh yeah. you know fun you know, upbeat, retro. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and then yeah. these guys are like nope Let's get to work on this right. side project. <laughs> um, I kind of wish there was more stuff like, um, what was the, the You'll Never Work in Television yeah. again? Is that the name of the song? Uh, I think that was my favorite song. And I kind of wish there was just more like that. Uh, but, you know, Tom York is very good at doing that, that kind of Tom York thing that this mm-hmm. album does, that kind of downer kind of stuff. Um, so I, I liked it. I thought it was good. I, w- I would listen All to right. it again. All right. What is, <laughs> let's see what Jeff, he thinks. Well, he, he thinks it didn't make any money. Or it won't. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's no audio slave. <laughs> okay. So let's start with Adam's band, The Smile. Okay. Even the name stinks. Uh, the album was a light for attracting attention. Um, of course, Adam would, would choose this. Uh, anything that's moody and slow paced, you know, droning, you know, that is what Adam would pick. You know, my question is, um, how many slow, droning, boring songs can you fit on an album? Answer, 12, okay? 12 of the 13 songs on this album fit that description. Um, two that really stand out that are absolutely brutal, a hairdryer and the pretentious waving a white flag uh it just awful um the only thing that i liked on this was uh we don't know what tomorrow brings um this is a band that's made up of members of a band that i don't like uh radiohead uh tom york who even spells his name annoying um how about this for an album how about um a hook does everything have to be dark and gloomy I don't know. Obviously, this wasn't for me. Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. Jeff Freefall, on brand, on brand. Um, yeah, he really hates Radiohead, man. He, yeah. just, uh, he yeah. hates anything that, that... I feel like it's anything that doesn't have a hook. I think he feel like anything that yeah. doesn't have some sort of pop chorus, he's just against it altogether. It's like it has to kind of have this structure of, I don't know. It's like, I mean, it's like, come on, dude. Have you ever done drugs? I mean, you know what I mean? Like that's <laughs> <laughs> sometimes your brain just goes other place. And it's not structured, you know, it's, it is broody. Life is broody and moody and weird. And it's so funny. Of course he doesn't like it. Um, but uh, yeah, that was fun. That was a great theme. Good job, Anthony. That's probably, Thank you. Oh, I thanks. didn't know what you're, what you're going to pick. You're going to be like, <laughs> Bands that dress up as Furbies, or you know, I have no idea. But, uh, uh, that was, well, that was my second choice. <laughs> <laughs> the Very Chuck E. Cool. Cheese band. Chuck E. Cheese oh, band. Yeah, yeah. You, you love the Chuck E. Cheese band. I think we should. I think we should. We should try to pick them on tour, and we, we should like. We could play those characters, and like that'd be kind of funny. Um, maybe we just terrorize children after the shows, but. Uh, <laughs> 
Thank you guys for listening and watching Dusty Vinyl. Uh, please follow us on uh, YouTube. We need more followers on our our YouTube page. And uh, yeah, get the word out. Keep buying vinyl. Support local record stores. All right, Anthony, place out, baby. All right. Do a solo. Something crazy. That's what we call a perfect show. All right, guys. Thank you. (laughs) Nailed it. (laughs) Nailed it.